my name is Elena, and I'm sure you're feeling a little unsettled at the moment given what you just saw, and it's alright. You're supposed to be. I've always loved sea turtles, and that was where my interest in the ocean stopped, until I saw this video. Since then, I have discovered the severity and the extent of plastic in the ocean, and then when I began working in retail, it dawned on me just how much plastic we go through each day, but also how easy it is to become numb to plastic when it's the only option. All right, let's start from the beginning. My friend Michael here, he's gonna tell us a little bit more about plastic and just how it became to be almost as common as air. Thank you, Elena. Plastic was first created in 1855 and was comprised of phenol and formaldehyde. However, the first synthetic plastic was not formulated until 1909. Maybe you've heard of it, Bacolite. This plastic was the first of its kind as it contained only synthetic molecules, meaning none come from nature. Compared to other commonly used materials such as metal and glass, plastic is much lighter in weight and cheaper to produce. Following World War II, plastic's popularity excelled, and by 1960, plastic was becoming a part of everyday life. Frisbees, the nets, laundry baskets, saran wrap, Christmas sheets, you name it, there was probably a plastic version of it. 1953 was a very important year, as this was the year that high-density polyethylene was created. Doesn't look familiar? That's because it would be another 24 years before high-density polyethylene was shaped into its now iconic form, the plastic bag. In 1979, these bags were introduced into grocery stores, and in six years, 75% of stores were offering them. Ten years after that, plastic had usurped paper bags and held 80% of the bag market. And the rest is history, right? Wrong. Plastic takes hundreds of years to degrade, and current estimates state that Americans alone use 100 billion plastic bags a year. That means that 100% of those, plus 100% of the bags accumulated since their introduction 40 years ago, still exist, and most of them are sitting on you. 100 billion bags. That is an incredibly huge number, and it can be tough to wrap your head around, which might be why some people prefer to just ignore the problem that is plastic altogether. I understand. But let me tell you what just a couple dozen bags can do. In 2017, a few years, beef whale washed ashore in the Netherlands. He was discovered stranded, but alive. If that's what you want to call him. Out of human decency, officials made the decision to euthanize him. It was later discovered that he starved to death with a full stomach a stomach filled with approximately three dozen plastic bags. This whale's diet usually consists of giant squid. These creatures dwell in the dark depths of the ocean, but do occasionally visit the surface. Since only 1% of plastic in the ocean remains on the surface, it's a reasonable assumption that deep-dwelling creatures have encountered the plastic pollution. That being said, it is not only plausible, but evident that a whale could mistake a plastic bag for, as with a whale in the Netherlands, and dozens more seen in recent events, the consumption of plastic bags takes a much higher toll than just empty calories. After the plastic is ingested, the body produces acid to break down the material in order to extract the nutrients. However, because of the plastic's synthetic makeup, the stomach is largely unsuccessful and hunger will persist. Because we don't eat whales or sea turtles, it would be easy to remove ourselves from the picture. But let's say a seagull eats a small plastic bag. The seagull will eventually follow the same fate as the whale, but halibut has been known to ambitiously prey on birds that are sitting on the water surface. The halibut has now ingested the bird, and it's no problem to digest it, but ultimately it will be left with the same plastic bag sitting in its stomach as the seagull. And here, we have a recent grand prize winner for a halibut fishing competition. How does this affect us? Though the stomach acid can't break down the bag as a whole, there will be bonds broken on the molecular level. The broken bonds release toxins and that are absorbed into the flesh of the organism that digested it. Toxins accrue as the plastics move up the food chain. And this grand prize halibut is cut and served on a platter seasoned with fresh herbs and plastic toxins. Bon appetit. Around 10% of the world's oil production is committed just to our plastic-dependent lifestyles. Single-use plastic bags will take anywhere between 400 and 1,000 years to break down into natural elements, meaning plastic isn't going anywhere anytime soon. 
The good news is a portion of these plastics are recycled. Bad news is the U.S. national average for recycling is 5%. And the global average is below 5%. It is an understatement to say there is room for improvement. Without those improvements, plastic directly threatens the health and safety of all organisms, including humans. The nonprofit organization Sea Turtles reports that hundreds of thousands of oceanic wildlife die from plastic pollution each year. Sea turtles eating shopping bags, seals tangled in fishing nets, vibrant coral reefs suffocated by layers of plastic bags. These are the most visible and most acknowledged issues because they disturb our aesthetic goals. Decaying carcasses along the beach, ranging from your typical seagull to some of the ocean's most mysterious inhabitants, is not what we envision when thinking of the ideal Chinese star anticipated by the American dream. Obviously, aesthetics is important to our society, since a simple search of plastic returns plastic surgery as the most common result. However, it should not be the only concern that we give our attention to. And though complete degradation may take up to 1,000 years, plastic can be broken down into fragments of itself by chemicals, heat, and UV light exposure. Each time plastic is fragmented, the bonds of polymers break and release toxins into the nearby surroundings. So for the plastic floating in the open ocean with maximum exposure to the sun, the plastic ingested by a sea turtle, and the layers of landfill succumbing to gravity, they are all slowly leaching toxins into the ocean, the soil, the air, the flesh. Whose flesh is that, you ask? It's our flesh. Remember the halibut? So now that we have you overwhelmed as you think about the chair you're sitting in, and the stash of grocery bags you have hidden under your kitchen sink, and finally the plastic beach that definitely is not part of your dream retirement, but it is the reality you face, what can we do to stop it? It's a big question, so I'm going to bring in my friend Nino to give you some content of what that might actually look like. Thank you, Elena. So the U.S. International Trade Commission reports that plastic bags cost retailers an estimated $4 billion. What if consumers stopped wanting plastic bags? It would be a win-win-win, a trifecta, if you will. But how? So studies have shown that when simply given two cost-free choices, the majority will choose the ethical choice, but also that the item itself and guilt-based advertisements had no impact on the choices made. As a company, it can simply be applied by giving the customer the option to have their purchases in the bag or not. The company will face reduced demand and will be able to cut back on their own demand and thereby gradually chip away at the $4 billion, win number one. Currently, every individual uses about an average of 360 plastic shopping bags a year. Most people are under the assumption that these shopping bags are free. However, it is quite the contrary. Courtesy of Mr. and Mrs. JQ Taxpayer, municipalities nationwide spend between $3.2 to $7.9 billion per year to clean up plastic bags, while public agencies spend around $500 million annually in litter cleanup. The cost of labor alone to collect curbside litter would fall between $0.17 to $0.79 cents for each piece of litter. As studies have shown, if companies were to offer the choice to use bags or not, the normal shift to not wanting plastic bags. And not only will the retailers benefit, but with less litter to clean up, consumers will either see tax cuts or presumably better quality of life as the litter funds can be used for other needs in the community. Win number two. Finally, with less plastic entering the ocean, the rate of wildlife death will ease and then that dream of that view from your beach front window can shine on. Win number three. 